All right, so let's actually look into how to protect against command execution. So we have protecting against command execution attacks. Now, there isn't. Uh, there are quite a few things attached to it. If an attacker can execute arbitrary code on your servers, your systems are almost certainly going to be compromised. You need to take great care when designing how your web server interacts with the underlying operating system. So the risks for such attacks, the prevalence is pretty common, especially nowadays with all sorts of new attack factors, especially when it comes to ser cloud servers, cloud security, cloud functions, all of that kind of stuff. The attack factors have multiplicated vastly, even though you might think so. Even though you might think that's actually different, it actually, um, they are more and more prevalent. Exploitability is actually moderate and the impact is, as it says here, quite devastating. So it's a major security lapse and the last steps along the road com uh, to complete behavior, uh, complete system takeover. So if you gain an access maybe you're gaining access with lower privilege on, on a system with lower privileges such as for example if you're gaining access into a, an http server you via a um, application security vulnerability then um, or application vulnerability then your uh, access levels would be with lower privileges but uh, then you the next step you will do is actually try to attempt to escalate your privileges install malicious scripts or make your server part of a botnet which is a very common practice command injection vulnerability often occurs in older legacy code such as CGI scripts not only that but often occur in um, as I've said, new environments as well and new settings as well. If your application calls out to the operating system, you need to be sure command strings are securely constructed or else you risk having malicious instructions injected by an attacker. So how to protect? Try to avoid command line calls altogether. Modern programming languages have interfaces that permit you to read files and emails and perform other operating system functions without actually having to do uh, command line or system calls. Use API wherever possible, only use shell commands where absolutely necessary. This will reduce the number of attack factors in your applications. Now, frameworks such as, I believe, Node and React do have their way with um, executing system commands via different uh, libraries. Escape inputs correctly. So. Injection vulnerabilities often occur when untrusted input is not sanitized. So if you use shell commands, be sure to scrub up input values for malicious characters such as this, which would actually terminate the command and actually allow you to chain another command. This one as well, also the pipe and also the hyphen, I believe. Even better, restrict input by testing it against a regular expression of known safe characters. For example, alphanumeric characters. Now, you might look up regular expressions against command execution. So regex against command execution. Maybe we can find something on this. Or maybe not. We're actually um, redirected or we're actually nudged into looking into hex planning. So command injection. Anyways, going back, restrict the permitted commands. So that's actually, that can be done via a whitelist, for example. Try to construct all or most of your shell commands so that you need, that you crucially need, using string literals rather than user input. Where user input is required, try to whitelist permitted values, as I've said, or enumerate them in a conditional statement. Now, perform thorough code reviews. Check system calls for vulnerabilities. Now, for those who are actually doing penetration tests, most of automated 
code review testing will fail when it comes to such circumstances and I do challenge you to prove me wrong in the comment section so do if you know of an automated like solution for secure code review tell me all about it because I've tested a lot of them in my penetration testing uh, work and what I found that the best way is to actually look manually through code and that gives me as a penetration tester as an application security tester this actually gives me much more satisfaction and greater joy when I find vulnerabilities so uh, vulnerabilities often creep in over time make sure your team knows what to look for and uh, as a side note here I've noticed that on YouTube on my channel uh, I've seen a lot of new people recently so uh, looking over into the analytics I see that uh, there are a lot of newcomers who come from browser suggestions who come from YouTube suggestions so if you're here for the first time I would kindly ask you to give a like and subscribe and share this video with whoever you think it is worth sharing it with like on your social media and tag me all along on Twitter and on LinkedIn now going back to our regular schedule run with restricted permissions it is a good practice to run your server processes with only the permissions that they require to function the principle of list least privilege so look into that in here principle of least privilege maybe we should look into this in a um, like individual video so this can help limit the impact of command injection vulnerabilities as a second line of defense and I've, I think I've talked about the principle of least privilege in a previous video but maybe we should actually go into it in a separate video do comment if you wanna if you want me to talk about this make sure each web server process can only access the directories that it needs and narrow down the directory in which they write or execute files consider running processes in a, ch um, a change root uh, or a ch root um, jail if you're running on uh, unix this will limit the ability to maliciously inject code to climb out of a directory now code samples this is the juicy stuff so in python this is the secure and this is the unsecure way new processes are spawned in python using modules such as pop open or pp open os and commands processes and sub process and is is the preferred so sub process that sub process is the preferred api others are deprecated and replaced by it the sub process module has built-in protection mechanisms against command execution so for example if we are in python here so python if we import os os uh, let's say do OS system let's say present working directory this is not gonna work I believe because we are in the Windows environment let's see if it works it's not because we are in the Windows environment and it's the exact same output that I would get if I do PW here PWD is not recognized as an internal or external command but if I go back into Python and actually import oh, import OS and then chain another command here OS system or I could just say let's see if it works with end end OS system dot uh, echo high which should work it doesn't let's see if it works with that it doesn't but it works with semicolon so this is actually the same as saying os.system after having it imported say echo high and this is exactly as saying echo high but we also get the signal that the process we have the exit code actually here which I believe comes from C++ because as far as I know Python is built in uh, C++ or in C if I'm correct 
If I'm not, the correction police should correct me in the comments section. So this protection can be disabled on the look, be on the lookout for anything that opens a process in the following manner. So in this situation, if you say shall true disables command injection checking so shall equals true if you're using the pro sub process and if you're using the call method if you're using the um, per the argument shall equals true this actually is going to disable command injection let's see how we're with how we are with the time here 10 minutes now in ruby you have the unsafe way using eval system kernel exec uh, and open of course and then if you must use command line calls in your application so if you're a penetration tester and you're doing a secure code review make sure you, and you're testing a ruby application ruby app, an application built in ruby make sure or that uses ruby make sure to look out for these if you must use command line calls in your application be sure to sanitize using the shell words module so in this situation you're just using open shell words escape pattern the file all right now moving on in java they only talk about uh, so since java is running a virtual machine command line calls are generally discouraged they can be executed using so they can be executed safely using the java lang runtime api however so runtime get runtime exec ls so if you're a penetration tester you can add uh, this uh, keyword to your command execution keywords list the call to exec will tokenize the input and make sure only a single command is run just be sure not to write your own tokenizer dot net there are a couple of ways to access the command line in c sharp through dot net though dot uh, net um, has a comprehensive set of standard lines so you will rarely need to do it and this is how you do it i don't know much about dot net so this is not my thing node so in a node you're using the child process module this is a wrapper around bin.sh so concatenating uh, commands is actually discouraged very discouraged so child process requires child process module or library maybe module child process this is how you execute ls minus l plus input path this is uh, your injection vector now instead use one of the functions so this is the unsafe way use one of the functions that take arrays as arguments so in this situation you would still use exec file you you use instead of exec you're actually using exec file which is the function that i believe takes uh, arrays as arguments and i don't know why this is not displayed accordingly and finally in php making command line calls is very uh, fairly common and there are a number of ways to make them you can use shell exact exact pass through system so i believe in in our in our attack uh, video we've looked uh, via the system can actually recall now be careful to sanitize the inputs to any of these functions and PHP now in PHP since, since uh, apparently you might not in bare in bare bones PHP since you might not have any built-in functions for actually doing it safely you might actually look into the protection uh, so by escaping inputs by restricting permitted commands by always performing code reviews and also by looking to run your um, commands if the input is like in the middle with least privileges in mind now further reading a note about shell commands in python a guide to shell commands in ruby command injection in ruby command injection in node so this one command injection in node i believe no just this one 
comes from the cheat sheet from uh, I've at first I thought that it comes from the OWASP cheat sheets but it doesn't say so so do look out or look at this git book because it appears to be interesting so node go to tutorial doesn't say much about it right doesn't say much about it but OWASP we get a weird redirection to git book so node go tutorial do actually look into this and maybe <laughs> If I have time at some point in the future and if there is demand for this, I will be looking into it. I might just append this for further notice in here. So that being said, this was command injection in um, a larger nutshell. Let's actually test ourselves. How could an attacker exploit a command uh, execution vulnerability? Set up a fake website that looks like your uh, site on a copycat copycat domain, summoning evil spirits, installing malicious code and making your server part of a botnet. How would running your server in chroot jail limit the impact of command execution by actually not allowing the user to get out of that directory? It forces users to accept terms and conditions before they continue. It increases uh, sentence length if you successfully prosecute. It restricts which directories the web server process can access, limiting the damage. So that was command execution now we're actually just gonna follow the path and in the next video we're going to go into click jacking so attack one video prevention and um, the quiz or defenses and the quiz in the subsequent video so with that being said this is done